Good morning. Our passage today comes from the second chapter of Matthew, which consists of uh, several stories that are not paralleled anywhere else in the New Testament. The visit of the Magi, the escape to Egypt, the slaughter of the innocents, and the Holy Family's return from Egypt. <clears throat> Most of them are connected to Old Testament prophecies, which Christians interpreted as applying to the Messiah. Since Matthew's audience was Jewish Christians, he shows the life of Jesus as reflecting important events in Israel's history. Pharaoh had ordered that male Hebrew children be slain, so Herod slaughters innocent children in Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph go down into Egypt, just as Jacob and his family did, <clears throat> and eventually Jesus' family leaves Egypt as the Hebrews experience the Exodus. Uh, rabbis of that time taught that when the Messiah returned, all the events of the Exodus would be reenacted. Uh, the one story here that is not paralleled in the Old Testament is the story of the Magi, the three kings. Uh, and we know nothing about the origin of this story. Uh, remember, two of the Gospels don't even have birth narratives. They begin with Jesus as an adult. The early Christians felt there was a gap here, and they tried to fill it in even inventing names for the characters in these stories. Uh, I'm sure you all know the wise men were named Balthazar, Melchior, and Gaspar. The only problem is those names are not in the New Testament. Uh, we still do something of the same thing. I mean, you can't get through Christmas without Nestor the long-eared donkey and the little drummer boy, brum -pum -pum -pum, you know, sort of thing. I even noticed in the hymn, the first hymn that we sang, the verse says that, they sped to that lowly manger bed. As you'll notice when we read the story, uh, Jesus was not in the manger. Uh, Mary and Joseph were in a house by the time the wise men got there. The wise men exercised a great fascination for early Christians. As I say, they invented names for them. Uh, when pictures of them, when it was possible after the uh, time of Constantine to put Christian art on the walls, uh, these men not only carried the gifts, but they were usually shown as a beardless young man, a middle-aged man with a dark beard, and an older man with a white beard. They symbolized the stages of life. Uh, artists enjoyed depicting them in exotic Eastern costumes. By the time of the Renaissance, the wise men were often shown as coming from the three continents that were known at that time, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Uh, stories were created about their lives. Uh, what are alleged to be their bones are enshrined in the cathedral in Cologne, Germany. In the city of Florence in the 15th century, the wise men were great favorites of Cosimo de' Medici, the unofficial ruler of the city. Uh, he was worried that he was not going to be able to go to heaven because of his immense wealth uh, and, and also the way he had earned it by loaning money at exorbitant interest rates. The wise men appealed to him because they were rich men who worshipped Jesus. Cosimo had the chapel in his magnificent house dedicated with a fresco showing a procession of people led by the wise men going to worship Jesus in Mary's lap. Uh, Cosimo himself was depicted riding beside one of the wise men on a humble donkey. Uh, in the monastic type cell where he meditated and prayed, Cosimo had a beautiful fresco painted of the wise men bowing before Mary and Jesus. Who these men were, we cannot know, but they are an important symbol of this part of the liturgical year that leads us from Christmas back toward what we call the ordinary days of the year. Let's read this story now as it appears in your bulletin. <clears throat> After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where's the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, 
and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> 